Welcome to Trash and Cash. In this series, I fix up eBay junk to see if I can turn a profit. So in this video, I have a Game Boy Color. I actually got this as part of a lot. It worked out to be about £20 a console. I'll put the listing on screen now. So looking at the seller's previous listings, it looks like they were selling a lot of consoles faulty, so I haven't got high hopes for this. This particular one seems to have some kind of bubble on screen. So I'm not sure if this is on the screen protector itself, the actual screen, or the case. No idea. So looking at everything else, everything else seems to be okay. There is some battery corrosion on the terminals. This is quite common, so we will need to clean that up as well. The other side looks okay. First thing we need to do, just test and see what works and doesn't work. Now that it's set up, let's see what works. So it turns on. The screen is displaying, so that's always good. I don't appear to have sound. So let's get this open to take a look. So we're having a look at some of these screws, there seems to be some corrosion on them also. So this doesn't give me high hopes for what the damage is on the inside. So taking a look, the top half actually surprisingly looks quite well. I don't see anything there, so if we have a look further down, of course there's some of the corrosion on the battery terminals as we pointed out before. So that will need to be cleaned up sooner rather than later. And there seems to be some on the DC jack as well. So I need to clean that up also. First thing I'm going to do, let's remove the board from the case. Ah, and that would be exactly why I was getting no sound. Because <laughs> the speaker was not even connected. So we'll have to fix that up at some point as well. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to look at this bubble on the screen. So let's remove the screen. To do this, you just kind of carefully pull apart the case and the screen should come out. So now that the screen is out, it doesn't look like it's on the case, so the bubble is on the screen. Which is interesting, I've actually never seen it do this. This definitely feels like a bubble as well. I'm wondering if this is just the polarized filter. Okay, so we've got nothing to lose. Let's take it off and try and replace it. So all I'm going to do is I'm going to get Stanley and I'm going to carefully remove the top layer. Uh, most of it seems to have come off now, which is great. And the bubble was on this layer, which is also great because we can definitely fix this. So now all I need to do is just remove the remaining part of the screen and clean it up. To do this, I'm going to carry on using my Stanley and I'm also going to use some IPA. Okay, I'm just cleaning up the last bit of the screen now. This took a lot longer than I expected. A lot tougher than I expected, but it's now ready. So just to make sure the screen works and to make sure the filter I'm about to apply works and we get the right orientation, I'm just gonna turn it on and place it over. So we can see now with the filter, we can see the Game Boy logo. So I'm gonna cut this to size and we'll get it ready. So now it's cut to size. I'm just gonna peel off the sticky adhesive layer and then carefully stick it on. If you've ever put on a screen protector for a phone, you know these are a pain in the ass with bubbles. I'm gonna try that again 
this time without the bubbles. So I've done it again, this time there is no bubbles, it was perfectly clean. So let's turn it on and just make sure it works fine. And look at that, and there's no bubble now. So now that the screen is fixed, I'm going to look at tackling all this corrosion and cleaning up the board generally. I'm also going to clean the contacts with contact cleaner and add IPA to the other switches and volume wheel. Starting with the battery contact, let's clean this up with some IPA. While I'm here, I'm also going to clean the button contacts because a lot of them seem to be quite dirty and we want to make sure that when we press the buttons, they make good contact. So I need to get into a good habit of putting some tape here because too many times have I accidentally rubbed off the marker with the IPA. I would definitely recommend taping this if you want to keep the original writing, which I certainly do. So now that the general board is cleaned and the battery contacts are clean, I'm just going to tackle the DC power jack. Now that's cleaned, I'm going to move on to the headphone jack and give that a clean. Now that they're cleaned externally, the way I clean it internally is I spray some contact cleaner inside and for the headphone jack I use a 3.5mm stereo jack that I've cut off a cable and just insert and remove several times. I'm going to repeat this with the DC jack. For the power switch I'm just going to dab some IPA into the switch and then switch the switch. Same thing with the volume wheel, I'm going to dab some IPA on and I'm going to spin it. Now for the speaker, I'm going to clean the speaker and then retin the wires. Look at that, disgusting. So now the speaker's all clean. I need to trim the wires so that I can tin them. First I'm just going to chop the first bits off. It looks like they actually broke due to corrosion. It was a bit green on the end. Now I'm going to strip the insulating wire. So actually looking closely after stripping that wire, it looks like that it's also got some corrosion on it. So this could this could definitely go quite far. No, that, that's definitely still there. So I'm going to replace these wires in its entirety. So all I'm going to do is apply some heat to here and carefully remove the wires. I've already cut out some fresh wire. So all I need to do is just tin them. None of the wires are tinned. Let's attach them to the speaker. So I've already prepared the area for the new wires. So all I'm going to do is add some flux and now attach the wires. Now that's attached, let's just check and see if it works. And as you can hear, there was sound. So that's fixed. The only thing left to do would be the general cleaning of the case. So to do this, I'm going to use an antibacterial wipe and give it a complete once over.
Now for all these buttons and rubbers, I'm going to give these all a clean and if by magic, they'll be done. So now that these are all been cleaned, the one last thing I need to do with the rubber is just clear up the contacts there. So now that all of the bits are cleaned, all we have to do left is just reassemble the unit. Now that the unit is fully assembled, the very last thing we need to do is just test that everything is still fully working. And as you can see in here, everything still works, so this console has been fully refurbished. So now for the cost breakdown. I haven't replaced the labels because they haven't arrived, so they will not be a part of this cost breakdown. But because of this, I'll have to reduce the price I could potentially sell this at because it's missing its labels. So when checking eBay on the sold listings, it seems you can get anywhere from 35 to 40. So I'm going to say it's 35 pounds on the lower end because there is some still damages to the shell and there isn't the labels. Now, working out how much I actually paid for this because it was part of a bigger job lot, it only cost me around 21 pounds. So if I was to sell it at this price, that would make the associated fees would be 4 pound 82 pence. And the cost of repair will be about two pound. This is slightly rounded up because an indefinite amount of wire and solder was used, but you still got to add them to the cost. Most of the cost came from the replacement filter for the screen. Postage fees will be about £3, which brings the total to £4.18 in profit. However, we have to fix a lot more consoles in order for the entire bundle to be worth it.